Hello, my friends. Welcome back. How are you? I hope doing okay. Are you ready to read the inspiration for today? We must be willing to let go of the life we planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. And that's by Joseph Campbell. Okay, let's cruise on over and see what I'm up to today. I have a plate here, and I could not give up on that ghost, you guys. Uh, I made some of those last year, and I sold them in my booth, but I was doing something wrong with them, and it just kept bothering me. I had to get these ghosts right, you guys, and I still am not quite there yet, but I'm definitely doing a lot better than I was. So I'm going to take this Glad press seal, which I won't be using again, but it did the job. It did, but I just wasn't able to get it out from under the ghost when I, you know, when he cured. And you're supposed to be able to get it out after the ghost cures. So I guess I need to go pick me up some of the Glad cling wrap because I've been watching some videos and you're supposed to use make sure that it's uh, glad that name brand and it, um, it it needs to be cling wrap but I thought I was really doing you know good by choosing this right here I thought well surely you know if you got to have cling wrap then this will be you know really good but no and this was a bad idea by clipping the clips on the plate, so I end up taking them off because what it did was um, it wouldn't let the, the paper lay down flat like I needed it to. And the reason we're using this plate is because the plate comes up a little bit on the sides. And that's how we need to make our ghost. And this plate holds about three ounces of resin because it's about a uh, eight or nine inch plate and that's what you know you're supposed to use on the ghost so that was another mistake I was making I was using a mold and I was also making this mistake I wasn't putting a barrier around my ghost I was laying the I was letting the ghost pouring the ghost out and then putting you know crushed glass on the ends of them and that's not how you do it you go ahead and form your barrier like I'm doing right now which I'm gonna change these beads because they're they're flying everywhere and this is not gonna work we're gonna have to take these off I thought they would really be cute because I seen uh, some other people doing beads on theirs but their beads I believe were a little bit bigger than these so I went ahead and tossed those beads and we're going to go ahead and use this crushed glass right here. And I'm just going to sprinkle it around and then I'm going to scoot it all the way back and form a circle with it. And that's going to be the barrier for our ghost. I did learn that three ounces does seem to be the best amount to make these ghosts. Of course, you could always use more and uh, make your ghost longer you know ha have like the dripping effect I did see some really beautiful ghosts made like that uh, but the trick to these ghosts is picking the ghost up off of the paper at the right time and that is uh, one of the hardest things that ha it has been for me you know one of the hardest things because you know, I could uh, get busy doing something else and I go back there to check it and it's not, it hasn't been sitting there long enough. And then I go back there and, oh no, it's been sitting there too long. And now I have to start all the way over, you know, so getting it down to figuring out the kind of epoxy that you're using and, you know, just the right amount of time that you need to give your ghost before, you know, it you have to get it at the right time it can't be too soon because then your resin is just going to drip you know and it can't be too late because then your resin is not going to lay down and form 
those nice um, little folds in the ghost that, you know, seem to come natural to a ghost. So, it's kind of tricky and kind of hard to get that part down, but once you do, you know, you're you're ready to make tons of ghosts. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to choose my Roxy Epoxy um, Glow Powder, and we're going to use the blue-green and I'm going to put a little bit of that glow powder in here to see if we can get this ghost to glow a little bit. And I'm going to add it to the white and not the black. And now I'm just dividing my resin into a two cups because this ghost is going to be black and white. And my cup over there that looks like it has black in it, it does not. I reuse these cups so this is clear resin going inside of them and there's nothing else in it at the moment. Okay, I'm going to grab my Pearl X um, Micro Pearl and I made this one out of pigment paste. And I have not shared that with you all yet because I'm not sure how I'm liking it so far. I did add some pigment paste to some of my um, mica powders and you how you make it is with your part A or part B of your leftover resin. You know how sometimes we have resin left over out of one of our bottles? It doesn't matter if it's part A or part B. You can use either one, just don't use both because then you'll have a big old mess. <laughs> So I did use um, some of mine and I mixed up some pigment paste out of some of my mica powders. And I'm just not sure how I'm liking it right now. I don't know if I didn't put enough in my black because my black is not as black as it used to be. <laughs> so I don't know if I need to add a little bit more to it or not. Um, so yeah, I'm still... Um, I'm still working on it y'all I don't know if I'm liking it or not <laughs> okay I'm stirring up that micro pearl in my resin now and then we're going to get the carbon black I also made this one out of pig pigment paste as well this is the one I was telling you is not as black as um, it should be So I'm going to go ahead and stir that up and then I'm going to end up having to add some more to it because it's just not as black as I want it. Now I do like the fact of um, not having to stir up mica powder in my resin. You know, that's why I, I put some of the resin in some of my mica powder so that I wouldn't have to deal with that. But I just don't know how I'm liking it. You know, my colors are off. So, I don't know. I guess I didn't put enough powders in them. Or maybe I put too much resin in them. It's one of the two. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit of alcohol down here. And that's just going, when I pour the resin, that's just going to um, help the resin to move faster across my, um, the bottom there. And it's also going to help keep bubbles to a minimum. Because when the alcohol hits a bubble, you know, it pops it. And I use... 91% uh, alcohol a lot of people use 99 but I use 91 you don't want to spray a lot of alcohol though you only want to you know do like a little spritz just to pop surface bubbles or to spray inside of your mold before you're pouring you know and that's to help keep the bubbles to a minimum and it's not uh, promised to pop every one of your bubbles or to solve your bubble problem. <laughs> you know, because there's nothing that's going to so solve your bubble problem except for maybe a pressure pot. 
And really, that doesn't solve it. All that does is make it so tiny, you know, that to the naked eye, we can't see it. But if you use a good quality resin, you know, and, and you pay attention to how you're stirring and how you're pouring and different things like that, you won't deal with a lot of bubbles. I use Let's Resin Epoxy. I use J Diction Epoxy. I use Super Clear Art Epoxy. I use um, all kinds of epoxies, you know, because there's not an epoxy that'll do every job that you need it to do. Okay, now I'm going to take my little tool here and I'm just going to go through here and just make some little wisp through my resin. Just kind of give it a little bit of a design in there so it just doesn't, you know, just look like the colors blended together on their own. Which is not too bad either, but I just wanted to add a little bit of a design to it. I'm just curious to see how it will uh, cure and what it will look like. I'm outside recording today because it's so nice out here. We have had some cool weather the past few days. In the morning, is in the mornings it's like 58, you know, or so, and it's been really nice. It's surely in that way throughout the day, <laughs> but it's a little bit cooler out here than normal. So I'm just enjoying it. My neighbors are doing some construction over there, and you can kind of hear one of them holler to the other one. <laughs> so I apologize for that if y'all can hear that. If you can hear it, it's it's not loud. <laughs> but you may be able to hear a little something. Okay, I'm just going around the edges here, making sure I push in my rocks a little bit. My crushed glass, they're not rocks. <laughs> you can also hear the locust outside. Okay, here's our hands, and I'm just going to put some, uh, some of the extra resin that I had left over. We're going to go ahead and add it to them. Because I poured a little more than three ounces. I wanted to be sure. <laughs> you know, you can't always go by what someone else says. So, I always, you know, try to uh, have a little bit more than what I need. Won't be long before we have these hands full. My goodness. Seems like I just got this mold in like two, three days ago. <laughs> it doesn't take long to fill them up though. You know, when you're creating every single day, it doesn't take long. Okay, you guys. I missed the part where I pulled this off the plate. I went to the store and I came home and I thought, oh no, I bet I, I let it set on the plate for too long. So I hurried up and snatched it off the plate and threw it on my little uh, thing right here before I hit record. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that, but it looks like it's going to go ahead and form. It looks really good. So I'm going to set it over to the side and let it do its thing. And I thought we would try to make a trick-or-treat bag for our ghost. So I finally got these in from Timu and they're 3D uh, UV resins. You're supposed to be able to draw with them and them hold their form before you cure them. And the orange did work, the purple worked, the black worked, but there were a bunch in there that didn't. See, like this one will not come out. It's almost like they half cured, half baked inside of there. <laughs> I don't know, but I got my money back for them. 
yesterday because, you know, I can't even use half of the box. I don't know what the deal is with them. I think I might try to buy them again before I go ahead and mark them off as, you know, a don't buy because they were working really good. Now, I can't draw worth a flip, you guys. So, <laughs> these bags look hilarious. <laughs> so, I don't know if we'll be using them. I'm going to try to take my drill here and see if I can try to uh, help them out a little bit. <laughs> they look terrible. I doubt we're going to be using these. I just don't know what I'm going to use for a little trick-or-treat bag for our ghost. All I know is I want my ghost to have a trick-or-treat bag. And I want my ghost to have a hat on. And I want my ghost to have spiders hanging off of its hat. Those are three things that I know. Now, how to execute those things is a different story. <laughs> so, I'm going to have to probably think of a different idea because I don't think this is going to work. These look awful. I'm trying to help them out a little bit. Here they are. These are the ones that I, I got to work. But, man, I can't draw. <laughs> Don't they look terrible, y'all? I, I can take it, y'all. It's okay. You can be honest. And I'm going to take those mouths off of them because they do look scary. I don't like the mouths that I put on them. <laughs> One of my subscribers said they looked creepy. And you are right. They do. The more I looked at them, I said, I, I got to take those things off. They look scary and I don't like scary things okay here's our ghost and he is cured so I'm going to try to get the paper out from underneath him but I fell at that <laughs> but what did help me out was the crushed glass being on the bottom did help me to go ahead and just get it tear it off really easily so I just left the paper underneath it because it's not hurting anything, you know, being under there. It doesn't look tacky. It doesn't look bad. It's not half ripped in there. Half of it's in there and half's not. All of it's in there. I just, uh, you know, cut it off right here at the end. So I'm just going to leave that one in there. I don't know if I'll be able to get it off of the green and orange ghost, but uh, I did do that one a little bit better than I did this one. I just wish I could, you know, get them off of the plate at the right time. <laughs> but the folds in this one looks a lot better. I didn't have to put any clamps on it or anything. It just put those folds in there naturally itself when I set it on top of my little, um, my little thing that I fixed up. And we're going to toss these. I'm not going to use them. Because they, I just, I don't like them. And maybe it's because I made them. I don't know. But I did find some buttons in my craft room. And I'm just going to um, take my little, um, my little snippers and snip off the back, button off the back. And then we're going to take some hot glue. And we're going to put a ribbon around the top of it to make it look like a trick-or-treat bucket. I thought that would be super cute. And I have several different ones here that we can use or choose from. See the back there? I'm just going to snip that part of that button right off. And now I'm going to take some ribbon. And I think we might use this one for my green and orange ghost. Which I'll have to finish and show you guys later. Because we're working on the black and white ghost now. The green and orange one hasn't cured yet. It's still forming. But I did put um, glow powder in the green and orange one too. Okay, I got these hats from the Dollar Tree, and they looked terrible, you guys. You can see the glue on them. 
they just weren't put together well but hey they were a dollar 25 so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make these hats look like they came from hobby lobby or michael's <laughs> i'm going to put some mod podge on the uh hat right here and i'm going to go ahead and put it all around the hat then see it it's all around the hat now i'm going to drop some glitter on top of that mod podge make sure i get it covering all of the mod podge then i'm going to take this little miniature measuring cup and i'm going to push it down on top of it and get that glue to really uh, get in touch with that mod podge And now let's just dust the excess glitter off. And then we'll go back. Well, I'm going to let this dry. Isn't that beautiful? And then we'll go back over that glitter with um, some Eileen's glue to lock that glitter in. Here's the green one. And then here's the orange one. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that we can uh, go ahead and move past this pretty quickly. And I'm just prepping the hats for my other ghost. And I'm going to push that glitter down into that Mod Podge. Dust the excess off and then lay it over here to dry. And then I'm just going to fold this back up and put it right on back in my container. Okay, let's go ahead and fix up some more of our trick-or-treat buckets. We might use this one on our black and white ghost. I'm trying to decide on which trick-or-treat bucket I want uh, her to have. because she's a girl <laughs> isn't that cute look at that yes we're gonna give her this trick-or-treat bucket I think it looks cute on her let's go ahead and add some of this hot glue and then put her trick-or-treat bucket on that is too cute Okay, I'm going to take this Eileen's Tacky Glue, and I'm going to put it over the glitter that we put on here. And that's going to lock that glitter in, you know, and let it keep it shine. And uh, that way the glitter won't fall off. Okay, we're almost done with this, and I'm going to let it lay it over there in front of the fan and let it dry, and then we'll go to the next step on the hat. But we're going to fix this hat right on up, y'all. We're going to make it so cute. And I'm just putting that uh, glue on the other hat. I'm not sure which color I want to use for our ghost yet. I don't know if I want to use the purple and black or the green and black for her. I wish I would have found a white and black hat, but I couldn't find one of those. I looked and I tried, but I couldn't find one.
and after trying to tackle those uh, trick-or-treat baskets I was not in the mood to be trying to make no witch's hat to y'all <laughs> okay our hat is dry so let's go ahead and drop some of that hot glue on it and my other hot glue gun is uh, the battery's dead on it so I had to get my other one out and I don't like this one as well because it doesn't seem like uh, it just doesn't seem like it works as good. I don't know. But I guess a hot glue gun is a hot glue gun, right? <laughs> it gets the job done. So I'm not going to gripe. I thank God I have it. <laughs> okay, let's smash it on there. Now... Here's what we're going to fix the hat up with and make the hat really cute. I went and grabbed a few pieces of ribbon and a few other little things to make it cute. And we're going to leave it a little bit long and that way we'll trim it when we get it on the hat and we can better measure how long we want to keep it, you know, and how much we want to cut off. And I'm just going to take a Chanel um, twisty stick. A lot of people call them pipe cleaners. And I just bend it around there and bring it back. And I'm just trying to bend it around it. And then I'll twist it in the back really tight. Okay, we have to fluff it out, work with it a little bit, get it to look right. Okay, I'm going to take another one of those little um, sticks, the Chanel sticks, and I'm going to bring it through here. And then I'm going to twist it. And it's going to leave a little bit hanging off, and that's what we're going to hang one of our spiders off of. Okay, I'm just getting that uh, that uh, real prickly piece under there, wrapped underneath there, so it doesn't um, hurt anyone. How's everyone doing today? And now I'm going to go ahead and trim up my I ribbons. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing okay. I'm having a lot of fun with this ghost. <laughs> I tell you, these things sold really good for me last year, and they looked horrible compared to this right here. So hopefully, I will uh, sell these too. And I'm going to put some lights under it as well. I know we put glow powder in it, but sometimes that glow powder just doesn't really glow. I don't know. I haven't found uh, really any fantastic glow powder unless you want to pay an arm and a leg for it. And I don't want to do that. I don't have an arm and a leg to give. <laughs> I put some cute Halloween ribbon in there too with some little ghost on it. And they're, uh, they have glitter in them. They're so cute. I'm going to take that ribbon and fold it over and cut it, and then it's going to make it real cute like that. I'm going to trim it a little off, fold it over, and cut it, and then it leaves it really cute looking on the edges. Now let's put our little spider on over here. I tell you, it ends up falling right off of there after I started uh, fluffing the ribbon out again. 
So I ended up having to take some UV resin and uh, put it on there and cure it. And that seemed to do the trick. Now I'm going to add a spider to this ribbon down here. And then here I am curing all the spiders up. I put three on there hanging from the ribbon. Can y'all see them? They look so cute. We are finished, you guys. What do you think about this ghost? I think it is super cute. So cute. Look at those spiders hanging in its hair. It has everything on it that I wanted. A trick-or-treat bucket, spiders hanging from its hair, and a cute hat. And here's the other one that I have sitting over there, and it's almost ready, you guys. Look at it. It made the folds in it by itself. I got all of the paper out of it, all of the wrap. So it worked out really well. So that cling, that glad wrap, cling wrap does work. And that's the hat I'm going to use for this one. Do you think uh, I should use that hat or do you think I should use the orange one? Maybe the orange and black one might look uh, cute on this one. What do y'all think? This hat or the orange one? And then I thought this trick-or-treat uh, bag would be cute with this one. But figuring out the fold to place the bag in, you know, is a bit tricky. It may look good in that fold right there. Let's try it over here and see what it looks like over here. If I can, I need another hand. Can someone lend me their hand right quick? <laughs> I don't know. Should I put it on the right or the left, you guys? I think it might look better on the other side. What do y'all think? There's a little bit more room on this side, but that doesn't necessarily mean it looks better over here. I just gave up, y'all. <laughs> I can't hold it all at the same time. <laughs> it's about that time for a sweet goodbye, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Goodbye, my friends.